Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Wa ma ba'du fa'audhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwajan li taskunu ilaha wa ja'ala bainakum. And one of his signs is this that he has created wives for you from among yourselves that you may find peace of mind in them and he has put love and tenderness between you and that surely are signs for a people who reflect respected amir sahab dear brothers assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu topic of my speech as respected amir sahab has said is mate selection finding eve in the garden of islam so I really like this title because so much is said in such few words. First of all, it emphasizes how to establish one of the fundamental building blocks of a peaceful society, a marriage. And even though the basic requirements of marriage are beneficial to a society, this topic forces us to delve deeper to understand the endless bounties found for those who anchor their marriages in a foundation of faith. Throughout the Quran and Hadith are teachings that bring men's attentions to the importance of marriage. The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is recorded to have said, marriage is my precept and my practice. Those who do not follow my practice are not of me. This is the reality of the situation. It's very clear. We say we belong to the community of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if we are sincere in our claim, there is no way an unmarried Muslim can be comfortable being single at a marriageable age. We know all the excuses. I haven't finished school yet, or I haven't found the right job, or simply I just don't want to lose my freedom so soon. Because of these worldly concerns, we have chosen to settle for perceived benefits over the divine promise of success. The instruction to marry isn't based on the desire to limit our options or confine us to a life of boredom. The reality is we are creatures designed to respond to stimuli and unless proper precautions are taken, we will fall victim to the various trials and distractions that lead us away from our ideal selves. The prescribed protection is marriage. The Quran says about our wives, they are a garment for you, and you are a garment for them, in chapter 2, verse 118. In marriage, we as men think that it is the women who need the protection, but the reality is that both parties receive precise protections that they need to establish the families and ultimately the society that will bring peace to our world. When we say we are finding Eve, this is exactly the spirit we must hold and the spirit we must instill in our children when discussing the status of a future wife. Symbolically, Eve is seen as the mother of mankind, and the choices she made are seen to have such an impact that they affect the decisions, that they affect the way that every human being interacts and engages in his life today. There is a verse in the Quran that depicts the value of life when it says, whosoever kills a man, it shall be as if he had killed all of mankind. It goes on to say, whosoever saves a life, it shall be as if he saved all of mankind. So I think for our purposes, we can go a bit further and say, she who gives birth, gives birth to all of mankind. This is the potential station of every woman on this planet. Through their bodies and their guidance, mankind is created, nurtured, and guided to their final destination, the meeting with their creator. Everything that happens throughout that process will determine if the child will grow to be an asset to the world and pleasing in the sight of Allah. An important saying of the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is that paradise lies at the feet of the mother. What a tremendous message. What a blessing to have such specific instruction on how to enter paradise. But the question has to come up. 
What is it about a mother that will grant us paradise? There are mothers all throughout our world, but the last way we would describe our world is as paradise. How is this message expressed 1,400 years ago from the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam relevant to us here today? How do we unlock the gates of paradise that lie at the feet of every woman who attained the position of, ma of motherhood? The answer lies in the ability of men to find Eve in the Garden of Islam and for women to prepare to be found in the Garden of Islam. According to this hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in order for this paradise to be expressed through a woman, she first must become a mother. This is the status of motherhood. Raising the next generation to be productive and responsible is the greatest responsibility to face a nation. As marriages fail and traditional families disappear, we have a rise in immorality, youth violence, child abuse, and other social maladies. When we talk about responsible mate selection, we are talking about doing our part as men to uphold the institution of paradise on earth that comes through God-fearing mothers. We as men initiate this process through mate selection. We house, care for, and protect this process as our wives become mothers and work to establish paradise in our families. We implement this process when we introduce our children to the world around them and begin to also guide them in their process of mate selection, finding Eve in the Garden of Islam. So now we know what's at stake. I don't want to be alarmist, but each of us must look at the world around us. It's all been tried. This is the last half of 2015. Our nation has existed for hundreds of years and we've passed countless pieces of legislation to protect our country and our neighbors from countless physical, economic, mental, and social ills. There is Social Security, Medicare, the Federal Reserve, Planned Parenthood, DCFS. We have freedom of religion to express every spiritual viewpoint on universal brotherhood and shared responsibility. We are protected by the police, the National Guard, the FBI, the CIA, and all levels of government whose stated goal is the peace and well-being of all of its citizens. But when we look at the moral, the physical, the economic, and psychological condition of our people, the stats get worse and worse. How can that be? How can we live in a country that has a legal and political system as advanced as any in the world, but we are still suffering from high levels of crime, racial strife, and economic imbalance? There is something missing in our tool shed. We have all these great institutions, but we are missing that element that should make all of these branches come together to work for the same goal. I am here to say that the answer lies in mate selection. Mate selection is the fundamental, most basic drive for self-preservation or propagation of the human species. So if we are not clear with what we want to generate through our choices in who we cohabitate with, we will simply follow our low desires, and the outcome will be generations that are driven by low desires. So if we have learned anything through all of our civil and social wins and losses in this country, it is that we cannot legislate morality. There is no law that we can pass that will make a person more compassionate or more forgiving or more generous that will all of these qualities, these are developed over years from a teacher who is also compassionate, forgiving, and generous. The value of these qualities cannot be shown all at once, but are perceived and sensed over years of exposure to them. The incubator for these qualities, these beautiful qualities, are in the loving relationship between a mother and her child as she operates in the tender and loving environment created by a husband and a wife. That man-woman partnership is the fundamental building block of every society. But to protect that union through the institution of marriage and reinforce that marriage through a commitment and faith raises a people to a level of interaction that can only be described as paradise on earth. The parameters of this faith are described in the title 
as the Garden of Islam. The Garden of Islam provides guidance and protection through every step of this process. And as always, the first step is prayer. In the Quran it says, and when my servants ask thee about me, say I am near. I answer the prayer of the supplicant when he prays to me. So they should hearken to me and believe in me that they may follow the right way. When a boy reaches the age of maturity and he is now ready to select a wife, he must get his focus right and understand the great experiences that he can, can, he can attain and the tremendous impact that he will have. So he must pray fervently for guidance in finding the right mate. All cynicism and sarcasm should never at any point approach our marriages. From the moment the marriage is considered up until the moment he buries his wife or his wife buries him. The lifeline of a successful Muslim marriage is faith, and there is no room for negativity in a heart filled with faith. Hazrat Ahmadjan, may Allah be pleased with her, the wife of our beloved Imam, the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, and mother and grandmother of Khulafa, clearly understood the importance of marriage and its implications. Therefore, she instructed her children from a very young age to pray for their future spouses, the spouses that they haven't even met yet. She still wanted those prayers to go out for them and draw them towards her. Allah has heard those prayers and through them created man and wife teams that have served Allah and mankind in ways we still can't fully comprehend. This is the impact of a marriage truly based on faith. After prayer, of course, we have to find the suitable mate. And the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us perfect guidance on how to select a mate. He says, a woman is married for four things. One for her wealth, two for nobility of family, three for her, be her beauty, and four for her good character. But we should attain success by choosing the one possessing good character. So for 1,400 years, men have been attracted to the same qualities of women. But still, the good character is the one, the key to success in our families and in our world. And we live in a world today where the most superficial qualities are promoted as the most important. And the reality is that after the initial attraction wears off, other than righteousness, none of the other qualities are enough to hold a relationship together. Again, this is not just me saying this. The evidence is all around us. We look at the news and the gossip pages, and the favorite topic is who's breaking up with who. These are the most physically attractive and financially well-off people in the world. But those qualities are never enough to hold their relationships together. Selfishness always seems to win out, and great potential turns into greater failure. Those brief bursts of excitement we receive when indul indulging in fleeting relationships based on superficial attractions are only sour samples of the intense emotion that can be achieved when experiencing love or passion as the source of love and passion has intended it to be experienced. This is the bottom line. There is no experience that will top the experience that is sanctioned by the all-knowing, most gracious God. His reward is all-encompassing and provides for all stages of married life. It unlocks the respect and care and excitement that develops the initial love and connection. Then it provides for the patience and attention and care needed to raise children and strengthen the family ties. And then it provides the proper guidance to establish the loyalty and compassion and care needed to support each other as throughout those twilight years as we return to our maker. So when I speak of these, in this situation, in this environment, I speak confidently because I feel I was blessed to live it. Some of you may know my mother um, or knew my mother, may Allah rest her soul. So when I speak of paradise that can be generated at the feet of the mother, through a truly loving relationship, I testified to it because I saw it, I lived it. I grew up in an environment and felt that loving embrace, and I tried to guide my life as humbly as I could 
in a way that reflected the guidance that she and, and my father provided. The promised Messiah used to say that a relationship between a husband and a wife should be like best friends. There should be true love between the two, true, sincere love between the two to where you are like tight, like friend, best friends. I can remember waking up at night as a child around midnight and my parents would be downstairs and they'd be laughing and talking after my father had come home from work. It'd be midnight and they'd be up and just having this back and forth, they'd catching up on the day and I would fall back asleep to the sound of that laughter and that friendship. And sometimes that moment and Fajr prayer would be the only interactions that I would have with my father. Past that time, outside of that time, it would be up to my mother to give us the guidance and keep us on our prayers. So I can recall her calling us in for Zor prayer while we were playing with our friends down the street and we didn't want to leave each other so our friends would come home with us and we'd all make prayer together. You know, African American, Filipino, white guy standing on the prayer rug making prayer together. You know, they loved my mother even though she wore a full veil. They loved my father, they called him Abba and he would come home from work on his motorcycle and they'd be chasing him down the street. It was through them that I learned the importance and necessity of being different in a world without guidelines. It was through their prayers and guidance that I understood the importance of a connection to this Jamaat and to take ownership of my faith. The greatest gift is now to be able to raise children with someone who I consider to be my friend, also guided in guiding those children through the teachings of Ahmadiyya. The system works if you work it, if you work it. Believe me, as a young man trapped by, surrounded by all the trappings of our time, I tested Allah's promise, and it was only the grace of Allah and the environment my parents were created and my, that protected my brothers and I from the storms of the modern society. The garment that they created for each other protected us all, and we continue, and we pray will continue to be a source of blessings and protection for our family. The Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, a wife is the true judge of the sincerity of her husband's faith. As husbands and future husbands, we must be sure that she sees a love of Islam in every action we take, beginning with the choice we make to seek her hand in marriage. So the message to my brothers as you contemplate marriage is get rid of your reservations. Commit yourselves to the idea of being married and do not let another year go of you alone. Ask Allah to guide you to your mate and provide your heart with that comfort and your soul with that protection. Approach this process with love and tenderness in your hearts. Approach this process with sincere prayer and tear-filled eyes. These are the emotions that bring about paradise in our homes. These are the emotions that will bring peace to our world. Our message of love for all must start at home and radiate to the world around us, just as the love of Allah touches everything that exists. For his love, we must hold ourselves to higher standards. For his love, we must show mankind the heights of human interaction and the benefits of living for him alone. Run to marriage and begin to amplify his love in your world. Do not deprive yourselves of the blessings associated with this union. If marriage is half the faith, then at least we can marry and say we have attained half of faith and its rewards. Inshallah, the other half will grow from that choice. My dear brothers, marry an Ahmadiyyad. Find your Eve in Ahmadiyyad. Only an Ahmadi wife holds the keys to paradise for our families. As an Ahmadi, your choice to marry is not your choice alone. It affects the entire world. Do not let the mirage of worldly beauty deprive you of the success promised through the righteous daughters of Ahmadiyyad. Strengthen the family of Ahmadiyyad. Bring about paradise on earth. Find your Eve in Ahmadiyyad. Find your Eve in the Garden of Islam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Walazina yakuluna rabana hablana Min Azwajina, Waza Wazburiyatina, 
kurata ayyuniwaj al nalil muttakina imama. And those who say, Our Lord, grant us, grant us of our wives and children the delight of our eyes and make us a model for the righteous. Jazakallah.